All right, 1041, welcome back to the stream. Glad you're here with us on this Tuesday. And because it's Tuesday, it's time to talk all things travel. Joining us now, CBS Travel Editor Peter Greenberg. Peter, good morning. Thanks for being with us. And good morning to you. Yeah, good to see you. All right, so I know Brad typically does this. He always asks, where are you today? What are you up to there quickly? Today I'm in Paris, oh. uh, actually broadcasting my radio show and then heading out to Normandy because we're coming up on the 80th anniversary of D-Day, June 6, 1944. Oh, wow. Busy schedule, lots of travel. So thanks for stopping by here at the stream to talk to us. Let's start with Boeing. CEO Dave Calhoun, of course, resigning. The chairman also backing away. Some other management roles are being shifted, too. So did you see this planning out this way? And what else could Boeing do as they try to really repair a reputation at this point? Well, let's just say I wasn't surprised with this shakeup. Remember, the, Calhoun leaving, he's the second CEO in five years, leaving for ostensibly the same reason. Remember, five years ago, we had the situation with the two Boeing 737 MAX crashes, one in Ethiopia, one in Indonesia that killed 346 people. And it was Boeing's behavior in the direct result of that, on the wake of that crash, that led to a, a criminal trial against Boeing, which they settled for about $2.5 billion, but it was a conditional settlement. And the conditional settlement was they would avoid further prosecution if they didn't repeat the behavior. Mm. Well, as you know, the Department of Justice has now reopened that criminal, that, that criminal probe and the FBI is investigating. And the question, of course, is what did Boeing know and when did they know it? And that's what they're going to try to find out. In the wake of all that, you've got the FAA and their mm -hmm. relationship with Boeing. And it's, it's just turmoil now within Boeing simply because it questions the very safety culture that Boeing had and has and their relationship with the FAA that needs to be further investigated because after all the FAA is a regulatory agency and they haven't been doing such a great job with, when it comes to Boeing. Well, speaking of the FAA, we know they could take action against Chicago-based United Airlines. There's been so many mid-air scares. United CEO is telling some customers they're going to take a closer look at its safety measures, speaking of that. But what power could the FAA actually exercise over United for this? Well, the FAA has the power to do just about anything they want with the right amount of evidence and investigation. But what's, right, what's happening right now, and this is not to be conflated with the Boeing situation, the incidents that we've seen with United are basically based on either maintenance issues or pilot training issues, and that's what the CEO is referring to. What the FAA is doing now with their increased scrutiny is they're saying that United can announce no new routes without the FAA approving it and certifying it. New, no new pilots can be certified without the FAA making sure about that. And the, and the United Airlines can't do, take delivery and operate any new planes from Boeing unless the FAA signs off on it. That's the beginning stages here, but let's not kid ourselves. It's very likely that the FAA will do that with other airlines as well because it's the safety culture and the relationship that the airlines have with Boeing. In many cases, the Boeing would describe the airlines as their partners. That's wrong. They're a regulatory agency. They are not their partners, and neither is and neither is Boeing. And that's the safety culture that has to be fixed before anything really gets done in the long term. All right. So now we have a developing story right now in Baltimore, just a major story right now, a state of emergency there. We're talking about a shipping vessel that was headed to Sri Lanka from Baltimore just left. We're talking about a major artery in the city right there, the Key Bridge. Can you just give me your thoughts or just feedback as we watch this unfold here? Well, we have video record of this now, which will be very helpful to the investigators as they as they try to figure out what exactly happened and when it happened. But if you look closely at the video, not that particular picture, but the actual video that took place in the in the in the evening hours, you will see that the this particular container ship lost power about 20 seconds before it hit the bridge. Oh. And then it regained power only about five seconds before it hit the bridge, but its momentum was fast enough to be, to be able to, unable to be able to stop. And it happened to hit the bridge right at a key support uh, uh, position. And as you saw in the video, it was remarkable and stunning how fast that entire bridge collapsed. It was, uh, there's your shot right there. That Boom. is just, I mean, seconds to see a, a yes. one and a half mile bridge, most of it go into the water yeah. that quickly. Yes, and so the real question now is, why was that vessel allowed to be going unescorted? Mm -hmm. No tugs. Uh, right now, so many the vessels bridge is gone. don't need the tugs because they have their other propulsion systems in terms of side thrusters in the bow and in the stern. But apparently this ship lost power. You'll see it in the video. 20 seconds before it hits the bridge, 
all its lights go off, and then five seconds before, the lights go back on, and they're desperately trying to reverse, but the momentum was just too strong, and we'll all see what happened. It's, it's a terrible disaster. It is, and I know why we have these rescue missions going on. Officials have already said that the crew on board that vessel were not hurt, so, I mean, we'll definitely be able to, I'm sure, learn something sooner than later because we have people living there to be able to explain this to us. And of course, black oh, boxes yes. and things oh, like yes. that. You're going to have, you're, you're not searching for the black box. The black box is there. All the radio transmissions are there and recorded, and you have eyewitnesses. So it will not take the long to figure out the chain of events that led to this and hopefully figure out a way so that it never happens again. Peter Greenberg, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, we appreciate you uh, always giving us some insight. You got it.